<sighs> What's up, guys? It's Jordan. I hope everyone is well. We've got some stuff we need to talk about. We've got to get this information out there, okay? 10-year Treasury bond yield, 1.87%. 30-year fixed national mortgage of locked rates sitting at 4.05%. But keep in mind that this is a par rate, meaning even, no money, no cost, with 20% down and excellent credit. Marginal buyers will be getting a higher rate. Also, I want you guys to know that these companies will advertise low rates, whether through direct mail or online advertising, email, etc. but it's classic bait and switch. They will tell you, you can get that rate we advertise, something that's extremely low based on those par rates, but it will cost you thousands. And they don't tell that to you until down the road. You think you're going to get a 3.5 or a 3.25, and they come back with their loan estimate, and it's a 4.5, and you're like, hey, wait, you told me I can get a three and a quarter rate, a three and a half rate. Well, they go, yeah, well, you could have on that day if you locked on that day, but you can still get it if you pay $15,000 or whatever it is. And that's how they get around that. But keep that in mind. It's very important. Find a lender who is honest and not going to give you the bait and switch just to reel you in, okay? So like I've been saying, Wall Street, Wall Street, Wall Street has been purchasing homes in bulk and they are on a reckoning path to own everything. For the fiscal year of 2021, one in seven homes sold last year were purchased by guess who? That's right, Wall Street and institutional investors. And it's even worse for starter priced homes. Those are purchased by investors at a rate of one in five. How about large apartment buildings? There are many doors in large apartment complexes and half of them, half, are now owned by tax evading private equity firms. Think about that. It gets even worse for iBuyers like when Zillow was buying properties and Open Door. When they get involved, it's worse because in some neighborhoods, 70% of houses are sold straight to institutional investors. Not the first time home buyer, not someone looking to downsize and upsize, but to institutional investors. Do you understand how potentially dangerous this is? On a street with 50 houses, Banksters and investors own at least seven of them. In a tower of 400 units, the anti-human alien hybrid corporations own at least 200. And let me tell you, they are just getting started. Corporate America's dream for you, guys, it's dead simple. They want to literally be the lord of your life. They want you permanently shacked in generational subscription serfdom. Okay, month after month, year after year, they want you to pay more money to rent the things that you used to be able to own outright for less houses, cars, mattresses, even clothes. It's coming, it's coming fast. I know somebody who lost their home because they could not pay the refrigerator that they financed. Don't finance a refrigerator, okay? If you can't afford it, don't buy it, guys. Remember the famous quote, you will own nothing and be happy. You know who said that. This is what happens when you financialize an economy, okay? When you turn everyday human necessities into tradable, income-producing, scrutinized investments to be sold to the highest leveraged bidder. And that's what we're seeing in real estate and it still continues to drive prices up like crazy. To me, personally, this is really sad for the middle class, the middle class who uses real estate to build generational wealth. It used to be the dream to pay off your mortgage and own your home free and clear. Now, they make it very difficult. People don't stay in their home for 30 years. People move in an average of seven and a half years. The first time home buyer, very difficult to secure property and start creating wealth for themselves and their family. Rent prices, let's not even talk about that. You know, I have never met anybody years down the road that were not happy that they owned real property.
Now I get it, and I and I get that some believe real estate investments in the form of for-profit landlording is good for local economies. I believe this is good for middle class trying to build wealth and leverage cash flow. It's hard work, but it is a proven system for building generational wealth that you can pass down to your family. Okay. However, when hedge funds private equity firms and foreign national interest suck the wealth out of the middle class, it is a huge problem in my opinion. And people who think that this is okay for Wall Street to own one in seven properties in America, perhaps, just perhaps, you don't truly understand how real estate works. Shelter speculation does not bring in cash. Outsiders spending money at restaurants, cinemas, and amusement parks that brings in cash. Shelter, shelter speculation simply outbids local working people and local working money so it can install a hose pipe to siphon wealth out of that society for years to come. So the local economy loses twice. First, because shell prices skyrocket, and second, because wealth is drained out in the long term. And right now, right this moment, investors are sinking 85 billion into build for rent schemes. What that means is builders are developing hundreds of thousands of homes, which is good, but it's not good because they're not building them to sell, but to rent trap young families who've been priced out of purchasing. Okay? Because these investors, because of them bidding up housing prices and short-term rental companies like Airbnb and Verbo, they are scything away family homes by the millions and the situation for renters has turned from dire to flat out desperation. People do not rent because they're broke. They rent, be they're broke because they rent, okay? Let's look at a little context from history. When all land was common land, which it used to be, a family could gather wood and stone and build a house in less than 500 hours. Boomers could pay off their house in less than 500, 5,000 hours of work. Gen Z will pay banksters 550,000 hours to rid themselves of a mortgage. Think about that. When land was common land, a family could gather wood and stone and build a house in less than 500 hours. Boomers could pay off their home in less than 5,000 hours of work. And Gen Z will pay banksters 50,000 hours to rid themselves of a mortgage. And most will never see that mortgage through. It will be sold and they will move and they will do something else. As for renters, well, you guys just get to pay every single month until you perish. That's what happens. And now, with Fannie and Freddie, for example, charging $12,000 for a $500,000 second home, in addition to the closing costs and down payment, the middle class loses again. That $12,000 fee shies some people away, a lot of people. And guess who doesn't have to pay that additional fee? Cash buyers, AKA Wall Street and the institutional investors, okay? Again, one in seven homes are now bought by Wall Street institutional investors. Starter home prices are rising seven times faster than renter incomes. The typical renter now needs 27 years to save for 20% down payment on the median starter home. And this is a huge crisis that is not being addressed. Okay. Now, if you own property, the gains have been remarkable with low inventory and these institutions driving up prices. But in my opinion, that as long as these two variables are at work, homes will continue to appreciate. Let me say that again. With low inventory and institutional investors driving up prices, it is my opinion that as long as these two variables are at work, homes will continue to appreciate. Once you start seeing that cash pull out of the market and inventory rising, I think we'll start to see a flattening out. However, I think they want to control everything. I think they want to control everything. That's really what I think is happening. Anyways, also, and another topic that I think is really big and needs to be addressed is right now the banks and the mortgage companies are really pushing with their marketing schemes a cash out refinance. I want you to be very careful of this, okay? Cash out refinance. Many homeowners are extremely equity rich at the moment. Refinance business is about to come to a screeching halt, but cash out refinances are being marketed heavily. Why is this? 
Why is this? This is my take, okay? I want you guys to think about it. Why do you think that they are pushing heavily on cash out refinances, okay? Recently, I've had some clients reach out to our lending partner about pulling some cash out to put in a pool. You know, we live in Vegas. It's a desert. It's hot in the summer. Pools are very nice. It's nice to cool off. Totally get it. I have a pool. But here's the issue. Many of these clients bought when rates were in the twos or bought several years ago and refinanced when rates were in the twos. So they have a really nice interest rate in the twos or low threes, okay? And now you have some equity in your home and you can pull cash out to put in an eighty to $100,000 pool to give your home, which is, this isn't good, is twenty dollars to $25,000 in added value. So eighty dollars to $100,000 for a pool, Twenty to twenty-five thousand in added value, but you're gonna refinance that money that you're pulling out, and you're gonna pay a higher interest rate. So let's say you pull out twenty-five percent of your equity to put in that pool, or do repairs, or buy a new car, or whatever. Now, let's say, let's just speak hypothetically here, and say that there is a correction of twenty percent in the market. I'm not saying there is going to be a correction, but Let's just say that there's a pullback of last year's appreciation of say 20% and let's see that those gains get diminished and taken back with a pullback. Now, let's say we have that pullback of 20% and now by taking out 25% equity, paying a rate in the high fours and we have a correction, guess who is now underwater at a higher interest rate? That could be bad. So be very careful when considering doing a cash out refinance unless absolutely necessary. You have to really think about it, okay? But that's just my opinion on the subject and I am seeing it being marketed heavily by the banks and mortgage companies and I think there is a reason it's being pushed so hard, okay? So thanks again for watching. That's it for today. Miss seeing you guys. Uh, shout out to everybody. I really, really appreciate you being here. I'm so grateful for the subscribers. We're almost to 5,000. Please share this video if you think somebody could find this information useful. Um, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment. I look forward to speaking to you guys and hearing from you. Have a very wonderful day, and we will talk soon. See ya.